Hello everybody, this is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Football Talk, preseason talk. This will be my running back 2023 season preview. We'll talk about the top 50, my spikes and yikes, who I'm liking, who I'm not liking. Uh, I would have preferred to do this video outside, but it's a really cruddy day. Um, I'm also I'm going on a trip tomorrow, so I kind of want to get this done before I go on my trip so I can focus on my you know, travels and experiences for the weekend. Although it would have been kind of nice to film this video from an undisclosed location um, during my travels, but uh, I'd rather, I think it's gonna be a, a, a lot more stress-free for me if I just get it done and put out into the ether before. So I already have to, you know, I don't really even want to draft this weekend, but, you know, Labor Day weekend's a big draft weekend, so I do have two two drafts scheduled for this weekend on, that I have to, you know, prioritize, so, you know, I'm going to have to work my schedule, work them into my schedule, and uh, so I'm, I just want to get this done, unfortunately, so you guys won't get any sports slash travel content i'll still i'm still gonna film some travel content just not gonna be inter, intertwined um let's get to it running backs preseason draft day top 50 so you're running backs to ones twos threes fours and fives most you know you're probably gonna go five deep at least on your team so we're gonna talk about the rankings and how I would prioritize them. You don't obviously don't have to take my advice, but your running back ones, according to ESPN, this is today's list, so it's as updated as it's going to get. Even though it does still have some guys listed, some guys who are on IR ranked, like Jeff Wilson, which we'll talk about later. So your running back ones, one through ten, you got one Austin Eckler. Two, we got Christian McCaffrey. Three, we got rookie B. John Robinson. Four, we got Saquon Barkley. Five, we got Derrick Henry. At six, we got Tony Pollard. Has that Cowboys backfield all to himself. So that got him into the running back one line right away. Seven, we got Nick Chubb, who has the Cleveland backfield all to himself, finally. And I am thrilled by this, personally, because I'm a huge Nick Chubb fan. I just, I just love the way he runs. Eight, we got Josh Jacobs. Nine, we got Joe Mixon. And ten, we got Travis Etienne. Running back twos. I'm just going to list the top 20. And then I'll work my, you know, up spikes and yikes from there. At 11, we got Najee Harris. At 12, we got rookie Jameer Gibbs, the other first-round running back. Um, in the real draft, first-round running back. I don't suggest taking Jameer Gibbs in the first round of your fantasy draft. 13, we got Aaron Jones. 14, we got Ramon Dre Stevenson, who, you know, we were kind of excited by the fact that uh, Ramon Dre was going to get that backfield to himself, but now Zeke Elliott is there, so it remains to be seen how that's going to happen. Ramon Dre is still very ownable, still a, a decent running back, too. 15, we got Damian Pierce. 16, we got Brees Hall, who, you know, we'll talk more about Brees Hall later. 17, we got Rashad White. He has that Tampa backfield to himself. He could have a breakout year. 18, we got Alvin Kamara. 19, Miles Sanders, who's now in Carolina. And 20 is James Conner, who is pretty much the only thing the Cardinals have going for them this year, which has pros and cons. All right, so um, my yikes. Austin Eckler, he's the number one running back. He has, uh, there's no reason to think that anything's going to change with Austin Eckler. He's been a fantastic um, fantasy running back. Overcome all the odds. He's tiny. He was undrafted. Um, and he's proven himself over and over and over again. And I see no reason why that won't continue. But th there's just something in the back of my mind that says this fortune with his health cannot is not sustainable at the position that he plays and his age. I think he's 29 now. That's around the time running backs usually start hitting the wall. Um, and the, the fact that he's so small is, uh, it's just, there's, there's no, like I said, there's no reason 
on in reality to suspect that he's going to fall off that much. But on paper, I do have concerns. So Austin Eckler is not my number one running back. I'm not knocking him out of the top five or anything, but he's not my number one. Uh, other yikes, Joe Mixon. I, I think Joe Mixon's a little washed. Um, I don't have Joe Mixon on my running back one line. He's probably still a decent mid-range running back two in the 14 to 20 range. Definitely not on the not a top 10 running back for me this year. Spikes. Josh Jacobs is at eight. I would have Josh Jacobs probably higher. I would have Josh Jacobs probably a five. I'd put him. I'd probably put him ahead of Derrick Henry knocking Derrick Henry down a little bit because of the fact that the Titans are just so the offense revolves around him so much and he's racking up he's racking up the, the miles and the, the years as well but again there's no reason to think Derrick Henry's going to just fall off this year either because Derrick Henry has been an outlier basically his whole career just as Austin Eckler has but their ages for both of them our concerns in the running back two lines Jameer Gibbs is at 12 I've got him outside he's a running back three for me I don't I'm not a believer in Jameer Gibbs right now I think he's more of yes there's a lot of comparisons to Alvin Kamara and I think he'll have his uses um I just think that the fact that the Lions now have David Montgomery David Montgomery's not going away David Montgomery's a very good back I just I think that they're probably both more high end running back threes than either one being a running back two in their current situation, but they're both definitely guys you should target in your draft. At value, David Montgomery's a much better pickup. Um other yikes, Alvin Kamara, he suspended the first three games. He's kind of fallen off a little bit anyways. There's going to be a committee there with the Saints, with Jamal Williams, who we'll talk about later. A lot of concerns with Alvin Kamara. He's not in the running back two line for me. Miles Sanders, I just am not a believer in him. I don't think he's very good. Um, the Panthers, Panthers will probably be a team that gives him more work. He might actually get some games where he gets 20 carries, and we'll see what he can do with that. But for me, um, I just like... There's a lot of other running backs I just like a lot more than Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders, at his price point, uh, I'm passing. So he's more of a running back three for me as well. Spikes in the running back two conversation. Brees Hall. I mean, if Brees Hall didn't get hurt, he'd be a top five, definitely top ten pick this year. Uh, he'd be in the running back, one of the top five running backs for sure. Brees Hall is one of the most talented running backs to come into the NFL in a long time. His injury is very unfortunate. His timeshare with Dalvin Cook is very unfortunate, but I'm a huge believer in the talent in Brees Hall, and he will be a steal by the time the second half of the season rolls around and the fantasy playoffs roll around. Brees Hall is, um, despite the injury, still in, in the running back one line for me over Joe Mixon. I've got Brees Hall higher than Joe Mixon. And then James Conner. Uh, James Conner is very boring. <laughs> Any fantasy analyst will tell you that. There's nothing exciting about James Conner. But James Conner is very productive. He's injury prone, yes. But per game basis, top 15 running back. And like I mentioned at the top of the episode, uh, he's basically all the Cardinals have going for him, which pros and the pros of that, he's going to get a lot of work. The cons of that, his efficiency may not be super great, um, which is... Which is okay, which is fine, I guess, because, um, A, his efficiency has been pretty good over the course of his career. So a little regression as he ages and with the offensive situation that he's in is to be expected. And at price point, at the price point you're getting James Conner, I think he's a value pick given the volume and the, the fact that he's really he's, – he's such a big running back. He gets into the end zone very successfully. The touchdowns, I think, are still going to be there. So, I'm a big James Conner fan in drafts this year at the price point that he's going as a low-end running back, too. I would have him a little higher. 
but still, he's in the about 15, 16, 17 range for me. Now the running back threes, 21 through 30. We got Kenneth Walker at 21. I'm a huge Kenneth Walker fan. I can't believe he's getting um, so little respect. And it's unfortunate. I haven't been getting Kenneth Walker in a lot of drafts either, which is strange to me because I've been targeting him. It's just um, it's just not working out. Just the draft board. Uh, I've been drafting Nick Chubb a lot. Kenneth Walker and Nick Chubb have the same bye week. So I'm a little reluctant, hesitant to pull the trigger on Kenneth Walker when it gets to the around to it. Um, it's just, it's just a lot of circumstances that have, um, led to me not getting Kenneth Walker as much as I would have liked this draft season, but I'm a big fan. I think he, he's definitely a top 20 running back, probably top 15, 22. We got Alex Madison. He's got the Vikings backfield all to himself. Yes. I know that we signed Miles Gaskin, but Miles Gaskin is trash. He's just there for depth. Ty Chandler. I don't, I'm not sure what Ty Chandler can do. I think he's a little small. We'll see what Ty Chandler can do, but this is Alex Madison's backfield. Alex Madison has proven that when he has stepped in for Dalvin Cook over the years through injuries, that he is a, um, a high-end running back too. Uh, so I don't understand why he's down at 22. I think that he should also be considered a running back too. So I've got him ahead of guys like Alvin Kamara, Miles Sanders, Jameer Gibbs, even... 23 got James Cook. James Cook should, should take over the Buffalo backfield this year. I thought I thought he was going to do that last year. I did target James Cook in drafts last year, and he didn't really pan out. Um, I haven't really been drafting James Cook this year because he's got a week 13 bye, which is, uh, for me this year, a really problematic bye week. So I've been avoiding James Cook. Um, also... Last year did leave a bit of a sour taste in my mouth with James Cook. I don't know what to do with the Buffalo backfield situation. It's been a mess for years now. I'm hoping this is that James Cook takes over. I think he's got the talent to take over. Uh, I'm just hesitant to pull the trigger on him this year. 24, we got Javante Williams, who presumably is going to finally be the guy in the Denver backfield should he stay healthy when he is 100% healthy. 25, you get Jonathan Taylor, who clearly we know he's a running back one when, he when healthy, but we know he's going to be on the injured reserve for the first four games of the year, which has downgraded him considerably on draft boards, but I still think he's a steal at 25. If you can afford to hold him on your injured reserve for the first four weeks of the season, you should definitely draft him because he's one of the biggest steals on the board right now. 26, we got Cam Akers. 27, David Montgomery. I already kind of talked about him. David Montgomery, I think, is a fantastic value pick this year. Problematic bye week. Week 9 is always problematic. Um, but if you can get the Detroit running back stack with Gibbs and Montgomery, you're pretty well set. 28, we got Isaiah Pacheco, who, who knows what to think with the Chiefs running backs, but he kind of does look like the, the front runner there. Clyde Edwards Alaire has clearly fallen out of favor. They didn't really add to the room in the offseason. But I mean he doesn't really catch passes. Um and they don't use him much. He'll be a fine flex option, but probably not a whole lot more than that. Twenty nine, we got JK Dobbins, who is healthy, but how much is he gonna split time with Gus Edwards? We don't know. 30, Dalvin Cook. I think Dalvin Cook's still supremely talented. And um, he's going to be the guy for the Jets as they ease Brees Hall back along. I think they're they're going to have a season-long timeshare. Um, I think they're both really talented. They're both very useful. The Jets definitely have a positive problem there with their running backs. Uh, my spikes and yikes in the running back threes. Yikes. J.K. Dobbins. Just not a fan of him and then you know Gus Edwards is looming Gus Edwards is there Lamar Jackson is there gonna get most of the carries um they're supposed to get more pass happy this year we'll see there's a lot of um unknowns with the Ravens offense and the Ravens running back situation uh, so I'm just kind of avoiding it entirely this year don't have a whole lot of, of yikes I got a lot of spikes though Kenneth Walker I already mentioned much higher on my list than he is in the consensus list. Alex Madison, higher on my list. 
Donovan Taylor higher on my list, David Montgomery higher on my list, and Dalvin Cook. I think all those guys, except maybe David Montgomery. Um, David Montgomery, I think Walker, Madison, Taylor, Cook, all top 20 running back still. Um, I just, I know that th there's this narrative that running back is a dying position in fantasy. It's still very deep. There's still 20 plus running backs who, like, there's still guys who are going as running back threes, even running back fours, who could be running back twos on your team. So it's still a very deep position. 31 through 40, you're running back fours. You got Khalil Herbert at 31. Presumably he's going to be the guy for the Bears, but Justin Fields is there. And he, he, you know, Khalil Herbert didn't score a whole lot of touchdowns last year. We'll see if that changes this year. 32, we got A.J. Dillon. He's still the, the running back two in Green Bay. Uh, but he's been very durable. So his, his durability helps him on draft day. His, um, I actually read stats, read something that his stats, his, the last two years have been fairly identical um, I just I feel like he had an off year last year, but I guess he didn't. He was kind of the same as the year before. I think the problem was we we all kind of just had a little bit more uh, anticipation of of better productivity last year than he than what he provided. So we left a little disappointed. Uh, but the Packers I w would assume this year are going to be a little bit more run heavy with Jordan Love as opposed to Aaron Rodgers as the quarterback. So AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones both could have pretty large roles which should boost, barring, you know, the health of both, their fantasy stock. DeAndre Swift at 33, he's clearly the most talented running back the Eagles have. I think he's, he's go there's going to be a committee early on. DeAndre Swift is going to be the guy uh, fairly early on. As, far, as long as he stays healthy, I think he's going to be a value pick. 34, we got Brian Robinson. 35, Antonio Gibson. So you got both the, the, the commanders running backs who are ranked right next to each other. The season projection is the same. Like, I actually drafted them both because I had the one pick in the draft. So I was on the turn. I drafted them both because I needed some running back help because uh, I went wide receiver, wide receiver, quarterback with my top three picks. So uh, what I missed on with quality running backs, I made up for with quantity. I took the Robinson and Gibson on the turn because um, who knows how that's going to play out. I think they're both very talented. They're both going to have a role. Um, but the fact that, that you know they're even in the ranks or even in the points projections, nobody really knows what's going to happen with that situation. So if you can get them both, that's ideal. 36, we got Jamal Williams. He's going to be the guy for the Saints for as long as Alvin Kamara is suspended. Uh, and... Who knows? He could be the guy for the Saints even after. 37, we've got Jeff Wilson. Obviously, he's going to get downgraded because he's on the IR for the first four weeks of the season. 38, we've got Samaj P. Ryan. He's in Denver now. He's Javante Williams' backup. There's a lot of belief that Samaj P. Ryan is going to get the majority of the carries early on while they ease Javante Williams back from his ACL. 39, we've got Rashad Penny. He's with the Eagles now. He's going to be in a timeshare with DeAndre Swift. And 40, we got Jarek McKinnon, the other Chiefs running back who, you know, showed us at the end of last year that he can still be a major fantasy asset. So, Spikes and Yikes at the running back four. Obviously, I'm yiking Jeff Wilson. He's off my board completely. Um, not even the top 50 guy. He's a guy that you should be targeting in waivers around week three, uh, definitely week four. Uh, but probably doesn't need to be on your draft board. Spikes, DeAndre Swift. I think DeAndre Swift is a top 25 running back um, who's going as running back four because of the uncertain role in Philly. But like I said, I think he's the most talented back and he's going to emerge as the guy fairly quickly. And then Jarek McKinnon should be higher on the list because you know, he won a lot of people their playoff matchups last year, and he had a very big role in the Super Bowl. I think that his um, we, he's obviously 100% healthy now. We saw that at the end of last season after a couple of years of some unfortunate circumstances around his knee. Um, 
he's back and possibly looks better than ever and I think that he's going to be a huge value pick um, especially in PPR which is pretty standard nowadays so yeah 41 to 50 running back fives so we've got Zach Charbonnet he is uh the rookie second round pick for the Seahawks I think he is the 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 major reason Kenneth Walker is getting so disrespected on draft day but I'm here to say that I believe Kenneth Walker is far more talented than Zach Charbonnet and I think that Kenneth Walker is going to be the guy I think Kenneth Walker is a stud that Zach Charbonnet obviously going to have a role that's why Seattle took him in the second round but I think Zach Charbonnet is going to be more of the pass catching guy third down guy he's going to make DJ Dallas irrelevant that's my opinion Kenneth Walker is still going to be the Marshawn Lynch, Chris Carson guy for Seattle. <clears throat> Zach Charbonnet. Both are going to have a role. Both are worth having on your team. But I don't think Zach Charbonnet, barring injury, Zach Charbonnet is not going to be running back one in Seattle for as long as Kenneth Walker is active. 42, Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary sucks. Um, there's a lot of people that believe that Damian Pierce, um, downgrading Damian Pierce because of the arrival of Devin Singletary, but I'm not worried about Devin Singletary. Damian Pierce, far better player. Singletary might have a role just because the Texans are going to be so bad. They're going to be running the ball a lot with the rookie quarterback. Um, but I don't, I don't see Devin Singletary overtaking Damian Pierce, Damian Pierce. For the running back one spot in Houston. But at value, yes, Devin Singletary is a far better value pick than Damian Pierce. Um, so if you want to take that risk and, or you believe that Singletary is a better player, by all means, go for it. 43, we got Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell, still, he's too talented to sit completely. Um, and he was successful in the limited attempts that he got after the 49ers acquired Christian McCaffrey last year. But I, I think he's going to have a very limited role again this year. Good handcuff to have, especially if you have McCaffrey. Um, but uh, not going to have a huge role. 44, we got Zeke Elliott. I think um, New England is, was a great landing spot for him. I think he's going to be, he's going to fill a Garrett Blunt kind of role where he's going to get a lot of short yardage stuff, a lot of goal line work. So. Um, that's probably going to affect Ramondre Stevenson. Ramondre Stevenson should still be the guy who gets the majority of the carries. Should still be the pass-catching back. Should still be a very successful fantasy running back. Um, but Elliott will probably vulture a lot of his touchdowns. So Ramondre Stevenson's touchdowns are going to come from long runs or something of the sort. Uh, the Patriots paid too much money to Ezekiel Elliott to not use him. Effectively, and I know I know Bill Belichick is going to use them effectively because Ezekiel Elliott can still be a very effective back in limited, uh, in a limited role. So, I think they're both going to have a pretty big role in New England. They're both worth having, especially if you if you have one, probably should draft the other. Forty five got Jalen Warren. A lot of people believe that Jalen Warren might actually be a better running back than Najee Harris, and I don't necessarily disagree with them. Uh, but Najee Harris was a first-round pick. Jalen Warren was undrafted. Um, Najee Harris is going to get another year, at least, to prove himself. And it's not like Najee Harris is a bad to back anyway. Uh, I think they both will have a role this year. Pittsburgh's offense should be vastly improved all around this year. 46, Tyler Algier. Um... <laughs> Their coach, Arthur Smith, says that Algier is still going to have a role. Tyler Algier was moderately successful last year as a fifth-round pick, but you don't draft a guy like Bijan Robinson and then use Tyler Algier for 10, 15 carries a game. Bijan Robinson is going to be a workhorse. He's going to be a bell cow. He's immensely talented. Um, Tyler Algier's role is going to be very minimal. I'm not sure he's worth having unless you have Bijan and you want the insurance 47 Rashawn Johnson Rashawn Johnson was 
you know, Bijan's backup at Texas. He's going to be Khalil Herbert's backup here in Chicago. He'll probably have a role. I'm sure Chicago's going to have a running back by committee. Nobody's really going to stand out, um, though I do believe Khalil Herbert is the most talented one uh, running back on the roster. So Khalil Herbert is the one that I would want to own. Uh, but Rashawn Johnson, again, if you have Khalil Herbert, you probably would want to, you know, stack Chicago running backs. 48, Raheem Mostert. Uh, Raheem Mostert, I'm, I'm spiking now because of the Jeff Wilson injury. Raheem Mostert is going to be running back one in Miami for at least the first four weeks. Uh, and and um, Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert split carries pretty damn evenly last year. Anyway, Jeff Wilson was a little bit more successful than Raheem Mostert. Uh, well, actually, no. Jeff Wilson was just a little bit more boomer bust. Mostert was a little bit more consistent. Um, Mostert just didn't really do anything spectacular. Raheem Mostert's now over 30. Um, it's it's a testament to his determination, I guess. The guy was undrafted. Uh, has had so many bad, unlucky injuries. He's over 30, and yet he's still in the NFL, still successful. Um... Mostert going to be a draft day steal because uh, the Jeff Wilson injury. Raheem Mostert's still going to be a guy that you can get down in like at running back five price. He's a guy you're going to be able to get in like round 14, round 15, who could put up flex worthy numbers on a weekly basis. 48, 49, we got Gus Edwards. Like I said, with the J.K. Dobbins, he's not going away. Um, there's going to be a timeshare there. Gus Will Edwards is a much better value pick than J.K. Dobbins, and Gus Edwards has always been successful when given the opportunity in Baltimore. And at 50, we got Damian Harris, who's now in Buffalo. Damian Harris, I think, is going to have a similar role that he had in New England. He's going to get a lot of the short yardage runs. He's going to get the goal line work. So Damian Harris could be um, a guy who a sneaky good fantasy value because of the touchdowns that he gets. Some guys outside the top 50 who could be played their way into the top 50 or definitely should be on your draft board. We got Deion Jackson and Zach Moss at the Colts because of the Jonathan Taylor injury. Those two guys are going to be splitting the work in the first four weeks of the season. Um, Zach Moss has been injured for most of the preseason, so he may not have a huge role right away. So it's going to be the Deion Jackson show week one for I'm pretty certain of that. But Zach Moss could be back ready to go in a 50-50 split or even be the starter by week two. So they're both worth probably picking up um, as Jonathan Taylor replacements or Jeff Wilson replacements if you've already drafted. those Both of those guys were on IR now. Uh, they're both worth picking up. At 55, we've got Devin uh, Achain. Devin Achain is going to be the running back two in Miami for now until Jeff Wilson comes back, but... Um, Devin, the problem with Devin Achain, not a lack of talent. He's uh, very talented. He's, Miami's the perfect place for him. He's just really small. So if he can go out there and, like Austin Eckler, prove that he can be durable and productive as a runner, then eventually I think he's going to be the number. He's going to be the running back one in Miami. So he's a very intriguing guy to at least watch. Um, but now with the Jeff Wilson injury, he's worth picking up as a replacement for Jeff Wilson because he's going to have a significant role right away. And then at 57, I think he's at 57. I actually don't know because I didn't take, uh, before I did this, I took screenshots of the running back list and didn't go deep enough to get this guy on the list. He's outside the top 55. I know that. I'm just putting him at 57. Uh, Kendra Miller, the rookie running back for the Saints, he's going he's going to have a role uh, for as long as Alvin Kamara is suspended. So for the first three weeks, Kendra Miller should be running back two in New Orleans. He should fulfill that Alvin Kamara role that um, Jamal Williams... I mean, Jamal Williams... I Jamal Williams is capable of being the, you know, bell cow for the Saints for three weeks. However... Kendra Miller, the Saints did invest a third-round pick in him. They obviously believe in his talent. They obviously see a role, a significant role for him. Maybe not in the present, but in the future, in the near future. Um, so 
I think he's worth taking a chance on at the end of your draft or on the waiver wire to replace Jeff Wilson, Jonathan Taylor, or if, if your IR allows for you to move Alvin Kamara onto it, Kendra Miller would be a good pickup for him too. I'm trying to look at some other guys that are injured right now. I don't know if there is anybody else that's officially ruled out for week one. There's Brees Hall. I'm not sure if he's going to play week one yet or not. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Like I said, running back's pretty deep. Uh, I mean, yes, running back, the, the bell cow, the workhorse running back is kind of a dying, a dying art. But there's still a lot of value, a lot of production to be had in fantasy drafts at the running back position. Um, and even at the end of a draft, you know, where or where you would think there would be slim pickings. I feel there's still a lot of talent, a lot of value and productivity on the board at running back. So if you miss on a running back at the top, like I have in two of my drafts, actually, I didn't draft a running back until like, usually I'm one of those guys who just hoards running backs. I go heavy on running backs early. Um, but in a couple of my drafts this year, I've actually switched up. Like I said, in my first video, I've tried to switch up my strategy a little bit. I actually avoided running backs for the first three rounds, which for me was wild. Um, and it's so, you know, I'm happy that there's a lot of product productivity on the board later. Um, especially, like, I've been, like, in those, I'm just happy. I'm loving the fact that David Montgomery is going so low in drafts. I think he's a huge deal. Dalvin Cook, huge deal. DeAndre Swift, huge deal. Derek McKinnon, huge deal. I'm just... And now that Jonathan Taylor, when the when the month first started, Jonathan Taylor was up like in the top 20, so you were having to use the second round pick on him. Now, in the last week or so, he's dropped significantly. So now I'm loving the fact that I can get a running back one down in like the, f I, I think I just got him today in the, I took him a, I took him a little early, around early maybe. I got him in the sixth. I was thrilled by that though. He that was that was fantastic. That was exciting to me. I actually, you know, I, I like I said, I took him around early because I was so excited to get him at that in that range that I passed on a wide. I probably should have took a wide receiver there, um, but uh, just, I just couldn't. I couldn't let Jonathan Taylor. I couldn't wait another round to get Jonathan Taylor. Um, so I ended up. Like I said, should have taken a wide receiver. I ended up with, like, Drake London uh, as my wide receiver, too. Um, so, ended up having to make up for it later on in the draft to get wide, some high upside wide receivers. I, th I think I took Drake London, Jahan Dotson, Jordan Addison as my next three picks because I, I needed that upside play because I, I whiffed. Um, at my own fault, I whiffed on getting a, a legitimate wide receiver, too. So I went for the upside plays, hoping that one or two of them pans out and puts up wide receiver two numbers this year. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, my stomach's starting to growl. I was actually I was actually hungry before I started filming. I just wanted to get this done because it, uh, my last one took like over a day to upload. Uh, so I want to get this one done and uploaded and you know get it the process and started as soon as possible, and then I'll. You know, gonna go cook after this. Uh, good luck in your drafts. Good luck in week one, and good luck this season. I'm still, I'm still trying to get. Even though I've been doing a lot of drafts, I'm still not like really hyped for football season like I normally am. I don't know what's going on with me. I think I'm dying. I might be dying. It's just wild. Hopefully, I get hyped up for it soon because, I mean, uh, football season, fall, I love fall. I usually love football season. You know, I, I want to get, I want to get excited for things that I don't have to 
pay for or you know you know I just I need more joy in my life and usually this stuff provides that for me so I'm hoping that the flip switches um, at some point soon so peace love nacho fries that's it I'll see you guys uh, after week one, I guess.